Spinosaurus was one of the largest land predators to ever walk the Earth. It lived between 99 and 93 million years ago, and it inhabited the rivers, deltas and coastal regions of what is now North Africa. Its fossils were discovered over 100 years ago, but only in the last few decades have we made any real progress into understanding the anatomy and lifestyle of this bizarre predatory dinosaur. Growing up to a possible 18 meters in length, Spinosaurus was one of the largest known land carnivores. Its narrow skull housed dozens of peg-shaped teeth. A row of elongated neural spines formed a sail or hump along its back, and it had a long, narrow tail which may have acted much like a paddle. Our understanding of what Spinosaurus looked like, how it lived, and what it ate has changed a lot over the years. Only more recently have we acquired enough information about Spinosaurids to build an accurate picture of these animals. The first Spinosaurus fossils were described by Ernst Stromer in 1915 and were found in the Baraya Formation of Egypt. Stromer named his discovery Spinosaurus aegyptiacus, meaning Egyptian spine lizard. Stromer was quick to realise this animal was special and unlike other theropods. He noted its elongated neural spines, long narrow snout and conical teeth which lacked serrations. In 1936, Stromer went about reconstructing Spinosaurus. His reconstruction showed the dinosaur in a kangaroo-like stance, a common way of depicting bipedal theropods in his day. And having only discovered the lower jaw of the animal, he imagined the rest of the skull might look more traditional, something along the lines of Megalosaurus. This depiction was very inaccurate, but due to what would follow, it would become the standard way of depicting Spinosaurus for decades to come. Stromer's Spinosaurus had been mounted for display at Munich Museum. When World War II broke out, Stromer petitioned for his specimens to be removed from the museum for safekeeping. Unfortunately for Stromer, who had a reputation for anti-Nazi views, his requests were met with little sympathy from the pro-Nazi head of the museum. In 1944, the Allies targeted Munich and bombed the city. The museum was badly damaged during the bombing raid and the Spinosaurus holotype specimen was destroyed. Unfortunately, for much of the rest of the 20th century, no new specimens came to light and Spinosaurus was largely overlooked. However, the 1970s and 80s saw a resurgence in interest in this odd dinosaur. Depictions of Spinosaurus began to pop up in children's books, some depicting it as bipedal and others as quadrupedal. The former would win out. Thanks to the discovery of another Spinosaurid in England in 1986, Baryonyx. And so it was settled. Spinosaurus was a crocodile-like bipedal theropod. And nothing did more to etch that into the minds of the general public than the third instalment of the Jurassic Park franchise in 2001. Filmmaker Joe Johnston decided that a replacement was needed for the iconic Tyrannosaurus Rex of the previous two films. Consulting with Jack Horner, it was agreed that they would need to look for something bigger and scarier. Horner argued that Spinosaurus was the perfect candidate. Tyrannosaurus? I don't think so. It sounds bigger. Research at the time was already beginning to suggest that Spinosaurus may have led a perseverous lifestyle. However, the filmmakers preferred a less subtle depiction. A monstrous, aggressive super predator would do just nicely. <laughs> This depiction of Spinosaurus as bipedal would persist until 2014, when the work of Niza Ibrahim and his team completely revolutionised our understanding of this animal. After years of collecting and studying specimens from Morocco, Ibrahim and his team published their findings and they were groundbreaking. Through the compositing of different specimens, the team presented a new vision of Spinosaurus to the world. It was an animal with smaller hind limbs than originally thought, and through their reconstruction of the skeleton, they proposed that Spinosaurus led a primarily aquatic lifestyle, and when on land, it walked on all four legs. These findings did face some criticism, one of the main points of contention being the use of composite bones to create their reconstruction. However, the team published a further paper in 2020 describing extensive new material, most notably a near-complete tail with elongated neural spines. These elongated neural spines extended out from the top and bottom of each vertebra and gave the tail an oar-like appearance, and the team argued that the tail was well adapted to generating thrust whilst in the water. Spinosaurus was clearly more adapted to swimming than had previously been thought, and was without a doubt, at the very least, highly semi-aquatic. 
Thanks to the work of Ibrahim and his team, we're beginning to understand what a bizarre dinosaur Spinosaurus really was. It was a dinosaur which, in terms of size, rivaled even the likes of Tyrannosaurus rex, yet likely spent most of its time in the water, feasted upon huge car-sized coelacanths and giant sawfish. But questions still remain. Was Spinosaurus' tail powerful enough to propel it through the water and pursue prey? The likes of David Hone and Thomas Holtz think not. They argue that it's far more likely that Spinosaurus waded into the water and caught its prey in a similar manner to the modern day heron. They argue that while Spinosaurus possessed more tail muscles than other theropods, it had fewer muscles than crocodilians, and its large body size would have created a lot of drag as it moved through the water. Therefore, they argue, it's unlikely Spinosaurus was an aquatic pursuit predator. So we still have some way to go before we truly understand to what degree Spinosaurus lived an aquatic lifestyle. But what we do know is that, whether Spinosaurus actively pursued its prey through the water, or stood in the shallows waiting for fish to swim by, it's a rare example of how non-avian dinosaurs invaded the aquatic realm. Dinosaurs dominated every terrestrial habitat throughout the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods, but Spinosaurus, and by extension it's likely its close relatives too, was the only dinosaur known to be semi-aquatic. The more we learn about this unique creature, the more we understand what dinosaurs were capable of. We already know that dinosaurs were one of the most successful groups of animals ever to exist, and our changing view of Spinosaurus only adds to the fascinating 220 million year story of how dinosaurs evolved and conquered the Earth. Thank you.